Matthew 18, when to break fellowship with people. Well, another good example we're going to see in Matthew 18 is when someone's kicked out of the church. When someone's kicked out of the church, you don't continue to fellowship with that person if you're still in the church, even if you disagree with, with the decision that was made. You don't continue to support people who come in and try to supplant the church and cause division and, mar and make offenses. There has to be, and you know, if you're going to be coming to our church or to any good church, you have to have some level of trust in your pastor to make wise decisions. Because that's the reason why they're put in that position to begin with. Now, nobody is perfect. I'm not claiming to be perfect and that every single decision I ever make is always going to be perfect, is always going to be right. I'm not saying that, but I am the one that has the authority in the church that's given to me by God as the pastor to make decisions. And, you know, the, the role of a pastor is to shepherd and to watch over the flock. And the whole congregation is the flock and the pastor is the one who's tasked with making sure that wolves don't creep in. It's my job to be trained in this area to watch and be able to identify people who are wolves that are trying to creep in. That's my job. Now, everyone should be aware of that and know what's going on. But the pastor's job is literally to be watching out for that. So if there's someone who's coming in, causing divisions, needs to be kicked out of the church, you are going to cause further divisions by going and continuing to fellowship with people who have already been, you've been just kicked out and ousted and, and we should have nothing to do with them. Matthew 18 will cover this. Look at verse number 15. The Bible says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. So this is talking about someone, two people in church just having a dispute amongst themselves. But this is one example of church discipline. Verse number, uh, let's keep reading here. Verse number 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So the Bible's saying, let that man just be like some unsaved person out in the world. You don't you know, this isn't someone you're going to be spending all your, you know, your time with and being best friends with. Just let them be unto you like a heathen. But that's if they reject the church. They've gone through these channels. Now, this is one example, but this can also be applied to other people that are thrown out of the church, not necessarily because of some problem they had with another church member. But for other reasons, we're going to get to that here in a minute. Turn, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it gives us a list of people that we should not be fellowshipping with as well. And this gives us some very good examples of people who actually aren't welcome in church. I've been receiving emails this week. And just to let you know, I don't know if, it's, if, if there's any extra motive behind this or not. But sodomites have been asking, oh, am I welcome at your church? Oh, I was just wondering how, how open and friendly you are with, with homos. Now, it could be that there just so happens to be people legitimately asking that question. But the majority of time, they're trying to trap you. They're trying to set you up. They're trying to, to catch you at your words. They're trying to cause problems. That's usually what happens to this. But I'm always going to tell people because I'm not afraid or ashamed to say, no, you're not welcome. Right. And you know what? That's where this church stands. Homosexuals, sodomites, fags, dykes, lesbians, queers, whatever you want to call them. They're not welcome here. They hate God. And you can read Romans chapter one. You can see what the Bible says about them. You can see in the New Testament how God has given Sodom and Gomorrah as an example to those that should after live ungodly of how God feels about it and what God does. God's law, the perfect law of God, puts a death penalty on homosexuality. Okay? And we're not going to allow perverts and pedophiles to come into our church to defile the church. Not going to happen. Not welcome. Not welcome. 